What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Trevor and Josh podcast, the podcast you can learn from, relate to, laugh at from two guys who realize the streets and the club only look fun on television and Instagram. Those are the only two places. What's good? How you feeling? It's been a while. It's been a minute since we've been on. Trevor Mason. Yes. <laughs> that's me. Been, it's been some months. It's been a few months. Indeed. But, but the friendship, nowhere, pod on break, but we're back. Yep, Life absolutely. has happened to us also fast, also tremendously fast. Um, and, but it's been cool, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it's been cool. I'm talking to you right now from a uh, elevated leg position. I recently tore my patella tendon um, that doesn't playing sound like basketball. Fun. No, it wasn't fun. Um, <laughs> this isn't fun. Um, but yeah, we're here. Surgery was last week. Uh, today was mm -hmm. physical therapy and we're progressing right along and um, not dwelling on on the injuries, man. What's up with you? I'm good. You know, busy. A um, lot of, you know, life things happening over the past few months. You know, some I'll get into probably yeah. in a in a future episode. <laughs> probably not yet. Probably yeah. not right now. Uh, but yeah, a lot, a lot of different things happening. Um, a lot of transitions. But, you are, but things. you are from Brooklyn, though, right? That's the thing. I'm not from Brooklyn. And this is a question that I get so frequently right now. Because people will be like, yo, where do you live? I live in Brooklyn. Oh, and they, and they get hyped. They get excited. Oh, you from Bed-Stuy. You from this. You from that. Do or die. Yeah, what question? I'm from what around question? the corner. Yeah, do or die. I'm this, I'm that. Yeah. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm sorry. I'm actually from Queens. No. Look at my phone posits. <laughs> <laughs> look at my phones. Look at my uh, my, my Mets phones, fitted. I'm a, I'm a Queens nigga. You know what I mean? Like, um, I'm, get it through that. I'm from Queens. Yeah, I always got to correct people. That's but, me in Long Island. That's me in Long Island. Everyone gives me Long Island heat. Um, oh, they think you're from your Long, because I went Long to Island. School in Long Island, yeah. yeah, and and also like Kim was going around with that narrative as a joke for a little bit too long, and she's just like, <laughs> "No, nah, he's from Long Island," and I'm like, "No, no, no, I live in seven one eight. I live in Rosedale. Yeah. Don't ever get it twisted. It's a big difference. Taxes. There's a huge difference. <laughs> you, everybody, definitely wants to rep where they're from. Like they want to be, you want to be appropriately categorized as where you're yeah, from, right? Yeah, like yeah. you don't want anybody. You don't want to be from Queens. And niggas is like, oh no, he's not from Queens. He's from the Bronx, or he's right. from Staten Island. Not Staten Island. To, you don't want. To, you never want to say something about yourself, and then someone who isn't you comes along and discredits where you're from. That's also yeah. whack too. You feel me? Like, and no, don't I'm assign me to Staten Island. <laughs> don't, don't assign, assign me. me to Staten Island, please. Bro, if you're from Staten Island, keep it low. Keep it very low. Keep it, so from low. The city. I'll say I'm from the city. Eh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want to be like I'm from Manhattan. I don't know if I want to do that. If I'm Harlem, That's if you're from whack. Harlem, you're from Harlem. Like I'm from Harlem. You know, you know, okay. Who are who are the coolest city people to you? Because there's a couple, right? There's LES. LES are cool. I'm from, I'm from the LES. Uh, I don't know. They can't dress. LES is cool. They're they're cool, but in their head they think they're they're the cool. So they drop that LES. Like they wear some stand. wild jeans. They wear the freakiest. They I do miss the LES. That's sick ass jeans. I miss I miss New York <laughs> and I miss the LES and the jeans. In the because I used to go to a pizza pizza whatever pizza beach. Uh -huh. Good time. Good little bar. All right, so you think LAS. You know, I think Harlem. I think Har Harlem niggas got the, the Harlem swag, the Harlem attitude. Harlem, is it? All Come of that. on. Yeah, I think- Harlem, I think Harlem is a staple in New York. Yeah, I think you're from, you from Harlem. Harlem? No. no in, er in any era, in any Listen. era, you from Harlem, you good. Harlem's thorough. Yeah. Harlem's thorough. Yeah. Um, what else? Uh, I'm from Uptown. <laughs> yes. like, I feel like if you throw you're from uptown, like it's cool. It's a cool stamp. It sounds really good. It's a cool thing to say. But it's very loose. Where's uptown? Where's it leaves you uh, open to end? interpretation. Very open. Is the east is like are, are you and it's like it's one of those things like low key. If I'm from anywhere in the city, I might say I'm from uptown. Cause I feel like mm -hmm. it's a thumbs up. No one's it really is, gonna question too up. much. It is a thumbs up. Now there's there's always like this yeah. thing where it's like some people from places like Westchester might say I'm from the Bronx. Ah, Mount Vernon be saying that too. Yeah. They might say I'm from the Bronx. Like, no, you're from Westchester. No, you're from Westchester. <laughs> you're from Parkchester. 914. Yeah. Yeah. You're from different. Mount different Vernon. Places. Yeah. Different police stations. Different, different everything. Stations. Yeah. Different no taxis. LAPD. Different Folks, everything. This is the New York geography. Indeed. If, you, because if you've been missing us. Just this is giving you, you get a break now, right? Because listen, here's here's you're waiting why. so many, you waiting so long. I heard New York is open, so we it have is. to we have to refresh everyone about the boroughs. New York Oops. is open. People do need to be reminded um, because only people open. from New York listen to us. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> New Yorkers are just for New Yorkers. That's it. That's it. Um, but no, it's 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 good to be from Queens. It's a great it's a great feeling to be from Queens. Yo, I, such a stamp. Amazing oh, feeling. Such a yeah. stamp. Because you can't um, really say bad things about Queens. You don't. There's, what can there's you not say? like really bad things you can say about Queens guys or Queens girls. No, and we have the best female rapper ever. Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've I've come a long way in appreciating Nikki for who she is and appreciating her bars and her impact on hip hop. She's 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 dope. She needs to be given her flowers. You know what? That's nice of you, man. Yeah. I think I'm here to give you flowers. I think I'm supposed to give you flowers over our little Seattle for someone. Ah, I know who it is. Talk about it later in the latest segment. Copy that. Copy that. So we got um we got we of course, you know, we 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 stay with the hot topics. We stay with the heat. So we're definitely coming at you guys with, with a few great topics today. Um we we put out a, a feeler on Instagram for Love. topics for our return episode, right? And Appreciate sometimes that. people give these topics and sometimes there's a response, sometimes there's no response. Sometimes there's horrible responses. Sometimes you guys want us to talk about things like $200 dates. Ah, We're not going to do that. You want to know why? Because we're grown. <laughs> so we're not going to talk about $200 dates. Because nah, after you get into a relationship, you pay for every date. <laughs> every date is a $200 date. It's not a random thing that happens. It's You're every right. time. You eat for two most of the times now. Yeah. What's so this whole two. eating alone thing? What's that about? What's Yo, the other day, I, I stepped out, sidebar, stepped mm-hmm. out to go get a new phone. I broke my phone. And as I was on my way home, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to grab something to eat. And I'm like, oh, sh- whoa, <laughs> silly me. Tim, what do you need? Before I even <laughs> what were you what I thinking? Wanted. Yeah, like, give me your options. Just t- tell me everything. Because it's like in life now, it's about two. It's about two. I remember, I remember during the middle of the day one day, I had a break during the middle of the day, and I went to get um, quesadillas and tacos. Nice. Uh, from from this spot, Avo Taco, uh, that we like to go to. Yo, yo, Avo's nice. Avo's dope. And they got $10 margaritas. Nice. Sorry, no. Sorry. Yes, not they do. We found that. $5. Five, 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 $5. Yeah, yeah we, found them, we found them in quarantine. Yes. New York City. <laughs> New York City, go to Avo Taco. That's the one. Absolutely. Yancey put me um, they, they do $5 margaritas, so I had a bunch of margaritas. I had like three margaritas. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and she was like, oh my gosh. On the dolo? You, I can't believe you went there without me. I love that place. And I was like, it's literally the middle of the day. You're home and you're working. What did you expect me to do? And I'm not going to bring you tacos seven hours later <laughs> after I have. You don't want, this, you don't want, you don't want soggy, the soggy seven tacos? hour on, old taco. I love you. Yeah. yeah come on. Fresh. That's nasty. I'm not doing I'll that. I'll make them. <laughs> I don't know how many tacos <laughs> I'm making after having three margaritas. So you were in the middle of the day. Let's talk about it. Let's get into it for a second. You went yeah. in the middle of the day. Work mm-hmm. break? What'd you say? It was a work break? Uh, it was like in between clients. It was like in between, between clients? clients. Yeah. I feel you. I feel you. Yo. yo. <laughs> Men, self care. I watched Diddy's entire story on Sunday. It's important. Okay, take some time to yourself. You want to treat yourself to another round, Trevor? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Get, get Trevor right, bro. Ask him who you pay for this, Trevor. Yeah, just talk to yourself and have some time. <laughs> Love you the way you want to be loved sometimes, because you know. Oh boy. Yes, no, no self care is good. Self care is good. Self care is important for men. We don't take care of ourselves enough. I know I don't take care of myself enough. I know that 100, 100%. You know, you know, we're on the go. We want to provide, we want to push, we want to work hard. But you got to take that those little moments. Absolutely. Oh, you got to. I actually woke up this morning and I washed my hair. Okay. I was going to have my sister do it. And, and I wash my hair all the time, but like this was like a, this was like a self care wash the hair. I was like, I'm going to just stay, stand here and just rinse until there's nothing in here. You were like the woman in the massage. shampoo commercial. <laughs> just uh, herbal Ooh. essence, herbal Ooh. essence. Oh, the essence of the herbs. Ooh. That's how you sweet, felt. Fresh. Yeah, I was OD. <laughs> Kim, Kim woke up. Right, this is six o'clock in the morning. Kim woke up. She came out the room. I had a bonnet on. I was like, "Hey, what's up? Good morning." <laughs> Casual. <laughs> bonnet. <laughs> Whatever. Self care, man. Yeah. Self care. Do what you got to do. Absolutely. Yeah, um, so saying all that to say, we got some great topics. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Man. <laughs> we got some great topics from uh, Josh's boy, Brendan, um, who responded to our, hey, like, what topics do you want to hear from us in this episode and had some really great topics. I shout got to another B. topic. Shout from to one of, Absolutely. I got another topic from one of my boys. Shout out to my boy, Frody. Frody. Um, 
his topic was high value men. Okay, okay, okay. And I was talking about high value men. And You're talking about Michael like B. Jordan or just diving into the. I mean, if that's your high value man, I don't, I don't know. It's not that's, my that's high value you, man. When you hear a high that's, value man, do you think of Michael I don't Jordan? Know. Well, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of right now who's the highest valued man. Probably Michael B. All the that's women want him. You man, that's not mine. <laughs> what's, up, what's up with you? <laughs> <laughs> you try to push that. That's not my man. But I'm that's your high to value say, man. When you think about high yeah. volume, high value, you just think about Michael Mike B. B. Stock price is up. So yeah, sorry. Okay. He got, he got, he got that Lori. <laughs> mm -hmm. What else he got? A couple movies that just dropped. A couple <laughs> movies that dropped last year. Animation series. Commercials that just dropped. I think he's a high value man. He's a high value man. Yeah. So my boy brought it up. And and have you heard of uh, Kevin Samuels? I've been here. I've been hearing of Kevin. I don't really tap into those people. Those are not my people. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good idea for your partnership and your relationship because like i, I want to oh, i want to talk about is it. Is it for the women's or for the men it's it's tricky because I, i've i watched given like that my boy brought that up as a topic like i watched a few videos and some of the videos okay. are i guess interesting and some of them he's kind of you know challenging women's opinions on certain things which is always you know dicey right. and um you know some of the stuff <laughs> is 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 not bad but it's something that I want us to like probably have a conversation before before we come in here and talk about it and say things that would have us you know sleeping in our cars. Hey, Kevin Samuels. Hey, man, listen, I'll be here for the next four months, right here in this seat. So don't you worry. <laughs> I'll be all. I'll do some research with some Kev. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like that'll be interesting for um, for another episode. But we're gonna get into this episode produced by Brendan. Okay. Okay. Essentially, indeed. So, uh, so first topic that we okay, got for you guys. Okay, Brendan with the production. With, with the production credit, right? So, so first topic that we got for you guys. Yeah, big production. That's nice. That's crazy, right? Uh, J Lo. <laughs> so J Lo was with A Rod, and then she wasn't with A Rod, and then they came out and said that they were actually still together, and right. then J Lo said, "Nah, I, I meant that shit. I'm out of here." Yeah. Um, and pause, then, pause there, pause there. Give the uh -huh. people why she left. Do you know why she left? Uh, they, she said she couldn't trust A Rod. Alleged cheating from Alexander, which is alleged cheated. Alleged, alleged. alleged, alleged, alleged. But it's it's definitely cheating for sure. And I just want to stop right here and say, <laughs> cheating is not good. Cheating is horrible. You should right? not you should not cheat on your partner. If you have a monogamous relationship with somebody and you guys agree that you're going to be together, it, yeah, exactly. If you guys other, agreed, if you guys agreed, then don't then don't do it. Then don't or do just it. be single. Either single. one, right? But if you have the queen in your palms, well, my man, you don't. You have to read the fine print. It says on the bottom, "Do not cheat ever." I got, a, I got a quote. I got a quote for that that I'm going to share with you after this episode is done because it's very <laughs> toxic. Um, <laughs> so, so after after J Lo and A Rod call it quits, all of a sudden Ben Affleck swoops in, a white boy, and scoops her back up. Real quick, real fast, it seemed like it happened like in a snap and a blink. As fast as you we can turn the light those, off, it we happened. don't trust those. We don't trust those. Do you feel like what? Ben was waiting in the wings? I don't trust those because I feel like my thing is whether Ben was waiting in the wings or not, I look at it from a different perspective. I'm like, J Lo moving on that quickly. And I get it, right? Like, mm -hmm. millions is millions and fame is fame. So it's probably a different world that we live. But I know that in my regular um, standard life, if my significant other moved on so quickly with her ex, well, guess what, baby girl? I wasn't the only one cheating. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I There's understand no way it's that warm. It's, There's no way that's warm, man. It's too warm. It's too I, warm. I, he was definitely waiting in the wings to a certain capacity. I mean, he said she they had did, him warm though. That they did remain friends. Um, I don't know to ex to what extent they were friends. And was it like, you know, J Lo sees trouble in paradise with A Rod, and she goes to talk to her male friend about her relationship problems, which is always a problem. Always a problem. Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, I'll, be I'll be damned. Oh yeah, I'll burn, be damned. I'll be houses, damned if another nigga was looking at me. Like, houses yeah. would be burned. Would be burned down. I'd burn down some. I'm burning my nigga's house. No problem, no issue. My biggest prayer most days, and I tell Kim this all the time, is that I'm never pushed, not by her, but just by like external, like in this situation, like I'm never pushed 
to like come out of character. I don't know what's I don't know I don't know what's like. Like, like as you say, houses will be burned down. Like maybe houses might actually get burned down. I don't know the level of crazy that I possess. I don't know. I think I think for me, like the easiest thing for me is just like burning the house down. Just burn the house down. Like burn that. everything. Yeah. Um, but I, I do Look, think let's start over, everyone. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> we all start over. We all start from zero. Um, but I, I, I do think it, it was nasty for Ben to be waiting, waiting in the wings. I mean, if she's you're happy, giving me she's you're happy. giving me a lot of Ben stuff, though. I want you to. I'm challenging you right now. I, I uh -huh. don't. I don't like this from J Lo. You don't like this move from J Lo? No, a single nigga can be there waiting in the wings all day long, all day long, because they are. And that's okay. And that's fine. That's what they do. That's what they are waiting do. in the shadows. So, like, I'm not surprised that Ben was there. No surprise there. What I am surprised is that J Lo is so willingly, after building an empire with some dude for three years, so she's like, Yeah, what's up, Ben? How you doing? It's good to see you. Let me jump into the back of the suburban. Let's go to travel in Montana. Let's go. Like, that to me is just, I don't like that. You know, as a mother, as a role model. Um, I'm not saying sit there and be more and be sad or sit there and eat shit, but I'm saying to go back to your ex so quick, it just doesn't look or feel right. But do what you want. It it looks a little fishy, a little funny. The reason why I'm not gonna blame uh, J Lo is because you know it's 2021, right? And this is true for all time, but it's even more true now. You know, women can make the decisions they want to make regarding their relationships. You know, if if it was another guy in the position set of JLo, they probably wouldn't be receiving as much judgment or criticism um, as far as JLo. JLo's, you know, relationships are really scrutinized as far as like, you know, the type of guys or the amount of guys that she's dated. Um, and the people that write the articles about JLo's um, relationships have probably been with the same amount of guys. And they probably have been with guys that work the counter at 7-Eleven, guys that are librarians, guys that just Yo, dating a nigga from the 7-Eleven counter play video games in their mom's basement so they try to, to like download like after work cut <laughs> <laughs> yeah so these kids came in today <laughs> and they tried to buy beer they just knocked off all the snickers <laughs> they knocked out all the snickers i had to pick them up i spent the next 45 hours picking them up the manager came in asked me why the snickers were on the floor i said these kids knocked them over he asked me why i didn't kick them out and chase them out the store and i said because you don't pay me enough to play security because you guys are open 24 hours and this will happen again very shortly so i'm not indeed doing right now i'm not um, doing it right now but, but jayla you. is you. you know free to do what she wants she is and, and, and that, again i'm not saying she's at fault listen salute to ben okay salute uh -huh. to jaylo because she's still my queen um of, of of pop stars not the queen of my life obviously. <laughs> um and what else uh you know a rod man you don't cheat on jaylo bro you just don't do it you don't cheat on anyone my thing is like I don't I don't know man I don't know I don't know as men right like when do we shut it off, right? Think when about this for a second. Off. I'm gonna paint a picture for you. Your name is Trevor Mason. Mm -hmm. You're a child star, so good in hoops, the best, right? Uh huh. Have a great career. You played for your favorite, the New York Knicks. You played. For, who's, give me another one. You like? What the uh Lakers? So loyal. No, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't I played play for the, the Knicks. Knicks. My whole career was with the Knicks. Okay, okay, okay. You, no, 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 not your whole career. Okay, so you, so you played. You played for the Knicks. Uh huh. You did two to three years with yep. um with the Lakers, and then you retired your jersey in the Raptors as a Knicks. You you made millions in uh -huh. that time in your young twenties. At fresh one year in college, high top recruit. You got into leagues. You have riches. You have fame. You have women. Mm -hmm. And then you have twenty to. 30 years of a career that you were never married ever serious relationships whatever but still money fame and women yep it you were never lacking with those things for 20 years 30 years now you're retired now you're doing sports now you're you're still him and you got the baddest in your the baddest in yep. your generation the baddest to have done it the baddest to come up like right she's like one of the baddest yep when do you shut it off trev when you're ready, nobody can shut it off for you, no matter how bad they are. Right, right. No, no, no. It's it's not about it's not. I don't think it's about how bad J Lo is. I just think, A Rod, you've been doing this shit for a very long. J Lo's the first girl he cheated on. So my thing is no. like more of a character thing. Like, when do you give it up? 
I think it's uh, some guys probably never do. You right, know, especially since I he, think that's wrong. Especially once you've got you know money and influence, and he already has his kids. Um, I, he, he there's, there's there's nothing that being faithful with a woman can add to his life that he sees as value or more valuable than anything he already has. So why do it? Because you know because, what? Because you know what it is when you sign up. You know what this the is ideal. when you sign up. Because you think you're ready, and you think that this is what you're supposed to do. This is what mm. Most people think this is what they're supposed to do, regardless. Of been, you potted that boy. Tell him what. Tell him when you're not ready. <laughs> <laughs> regardless of if you're rich or not, most people think this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be with somebody, be with only them, um, be with them for the rest of your life, right? Form a partnership and right. just keep it moving, right? And some people not easy. do that and think that's what they're supposed to do, and they're not successful with it because it's not what they really want to do. It has to be what you really want to do, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and you have I, to feel I, like, I love that point. I love that. Yeah, point. and you got to really feel like it's adding to your life. You got to yeah. like. I feel like it's adding to. And my I think life. he thought it added to his life. It. I mean, from the outside looking in, it did. Right. Yeah. It looked like it yeah. added to his life, but he probably still wanted more. You know, more of whatever it is he was, he was chasing. Uh, besides her, that's which is tough, which is man. Well, listen, like I listen. I, I get it. It's, not that's, everybody's that's perfect. As real, that's as real as it gets. Because yeah. in, in your statement, money didn't matter. Right? No, it doesn't. It, you know I mean? it fame doesn't. didn't matter. It's about when you're ready. And I listen, think- man. I, I I know guys in my lifetime that have probably never made more than twenty five thousand dollars in a year. That got woman on woman on woman on woman. It's, it's not sad. necessarily about that. Like it's right. about you know your, your your demeanor, how you can talk to people, how you make people feel. Like right. if you make somebody, it doesn't matter how much money you make. Like if you can make somebody in a room feel like the only person in the room and just feel so valuable about themselves that's more valuable than anything honestly that's everything that's the that's that's why we played it i mean that's why i played the game you feel yeah me? and it's about the confidence you have and some people get their confidence from their money most people do i think everybody does the more money you have in your pocket the more confident you are but there yeah. are some people who don't need that to be confident Honey. Honey. i need it to be confident i feel that that's real. I do, you know, I, oh, to a certain extent, you know. But um, you know, as far as A Rod, you know, just when whenever you're ready to be with somebody and only be with them and establish that that's what the relationship is, then do it. Until then, just chill, relax. You know, nothing wrong with that either. That's the thing. Like, be honest with where you're at in life, um, and be honest with the things that you're about to embark on in life, right? Like. I think that's mm-hmm. important too. Because like a, anybody, anybody, majority of people getting involved into a relationship right now should be honest with like, hey, this relationship, we're agreeing to stay monogamous, right? Like that's what we're agreeing to. If that's what we're agreeing to, then we have to be honest with ourselves in that moment. Is this possible for me? Well, it was even more than a conversation because they were engaged. They were engaged. So you're you're you know, you're making this con this this commitment to this person for the rest of your life, essentially, when you get engaged. Yeah, they were um, engaged. To be married. You know, so, um, you know, that's kind of (laughs) understood, I hope, at that point, right? Um, But yeah, you know, A-Rod doesn't need to do this. And a certain part of it comes into, comes into play is like, how much empathy, you know, does does A-Rod have going into this situation, right? Like, you know, doing, getting into these businesses with her, proposing to her, promising these certain things but then still not being 100 percent ready for it right like it's kind of selfish there's really no level of empathy there to think about the consequences of your actions or how you know anybody else could be hurt if you're not exactly following through on the promises that you established the children involved i don't think the children are really involved like the children are old enough to understand who their parents are no, I yeah, big, I know, I but like we thing. spent, but think about it. like, I, I think, and I don't want, I don't want to over glaze this because how many people do we know that have come from relationships like this, very similar to like this. And like we glaze over, like the kids know what's going on, but it's like, these have, we see that these things have lasting effects. I want to take away from A-Rod and I want to take it away from J-Lo right now. I just want to talk about separations. What like, to me, the way I see it is like, Hey, so-and-so, this is my new dude whatever his name is and he's now he's around and now he's at family functions at my recitals and this and that and we and i got you comfortable with this person and now this person is now out and like you're already 
in a process of trying to figure out who my father is and 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 no or not not I'm not talking about their kids. I'm just talking about like these are the effects that it has on children. Like I don't have a relationship with my dad, he's not around. And now this guy came into my life and things were really good and he was consistent, right? Like seeing Ada was consistent, and now that whole thing is just gonna I'm 10 years old. It's gonna change my entire dynamic of life from growing up and what I see about relationships, right? And I feel like these are the things that we have to factor in. Like these are the things that that there's 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 strays that go for every big bang. There, I feel like there's always strays, and kids sometimes catch the stray in these small. Like to us, it's like oh, it's just a breakup. Well, what? it's on the parents to really guard guard kids from that. You know, if parents are single and dating, um, you know, you got to be really careful about who you you know bring around your kids. You know, not everybody is for that introduction or for that meeting. You know, some I, I know people, I know friends that I had that have kids and they'll date somebody for maybe three or four months and just off the off the respect that they might have like for their kids and trying to establish something with this person before it's even brought to brought to a family situation. Like they won't even like introduce the kid to whoever it is that they're dating. You know, right, because, right, right. because they know that there might tight. either be like some some questions or or drama or anything there. And you know, they might tell their kids, hey, like, you know, mommy or daddy is dating somebody um you know but you know i don't really think like it's ready i, I think you just got to be transparent with kids right we look at kids and just think that they have this kid brain but they they see everything they soak it up they they rationalize certain things in a certain way uh kids for the most part kind of internal like kind of personalize things like they see things as their fault if things don't go a certain way if their parents aren't happy they think what can they do to fix it um you know, we got as as parents, like you got to take that that pressure off your kids, you know, and just keep it on you and whatever it is you're trying to do with your life as far as like building relationships. Because you know, just because a parent is single doesn't mean they shouldn't have love or or no, find a relationship. They just need to you know navigate it different because there's a, a huge factor there now, right? It's not just them worrying about themselves. It's a lot, you know. It's a lot, man. Indeed. Prayers for J Lo, for J uh, A Rod, for the kids, and for Ben. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll save my prayers. They'll be okay. Um, <laughs> so we're coming out of a uh, next topic. We're coming out of a, a pandemic. You know, people are getting shots, vaccinations, things are opening. Uh, and one thing that, you know, we've really seen a lot is the music is coming. You know, as far as hip hop music, you got new Khaled, you got new J, no, yeah. new Nas, yeah. new J. Cole, uh, new old Nicki. Um, uh, seeing green, seeing green's heat. Seeing green is heat. I will give you that. Seeing green is heat. Um, hey, can I ask you a question? Yeah, real quick. You don't have to, you don't have to dwell on this for too long. Go ahead. The way my son was giving it up on seeing green, the way my it, son was talking, the way my son was talking to niggas, like the way he was really addressing this couple certain things, couple remarks, couple, you know what I mean? What do you have uh -huh. to say to that? Anything, anything good? Nothing good, nothing good. I, the thing is, I can't, I can't be critical because you're gonna think I'm just hating anyway. So I'm just gonna tell no, you. No, how you know what? No, no, be critical, please. I'm gonna tell you how I honestly feel. He wasn't giving it up like Nicki or Wayne. Not on seeing green. Oh, uh, I would have to listen to that again. He wasn't. Well, give me one thing that Nicki. Give me one thing Nicki gave up, and give me one thing Wayne gave up that you're like, yo, okay. And then I don't. I'll give, I don't I'll have give no, two things that Drake gave up. No, you I don't, don't have, have it off the top of my head right now, but Drake like I've listened to it. He knows your wife for eight years, still fuck like it was the first time. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Wow, that was that was so mean. <laughs> nah, and then I, I mean, it's and then, disrespect. Um, it's subtle disrespect. And honestly, and that's I think, not a good you, line, but it's just like the way he gets that into a song is crazy. Did you listen to to Fractions? To Fractions by Nicki? No, I did not. I did that not just fire. get past that song. Is it good? That's just fire. She okay. she has some bar bars on that shit. Who's she coming um, from? Who's Nikki's Who's Nikki's nemesis right now? Who do you think is her nemesis? Um, I, I think as a as a person, like you give yourself a nemesis. I think her yeah, nemesis right. is basically just hip hop, right? I think it's <laughs> it is. I think her nemesis yeah. is people yeah. not giving her flowers, or are people like kind of putting you know Meg and Cardi and big lotto and cash doll and all these other like female rappers that kind of are in her lane giving them all this attention all this love and all these flowers and kind of forgetting the legend that she is right and she's i don't like that i don't like reminding that. people but it's it's a time thing right because she yeah, took a break a she had a uh, she had a child she I wouldn't got even married use that. I wouldn't she use lost her time and kid though she lost her dad 
So she had yeah. some, so she had some time off. She and did. you know, in that time off, Meg was dropping shit every week. Like if it wasn't her and project itself, it was a feature on everything. Cardi's dropping stuff every week, features on everything, and the shit that Cardi is dropping is fire too. Uh, right? what did I like from Cardi? I liked her I liked her bar on Khaled. Uh, yeah, the big paper. The Khaled song is is fire. Up like is that. fire. But you be up. Uh, you don't like up? I'm not. I, I'm. I will never, in my life, repeat those words in a club. And I would never <laughs> ever. I will never ever look at my man's because I've seen this in the barbershops in New York. Yo, my man, if it's up, it's stuck. I would never. Mm, I no, would I'm not never, at that. I'm not at I that point with it. I just think it's. A, I think it's a hot beat. I think it's a great song. I think it's a really like well put together song. I think it's great. Yo, dudes, um, if you out there telling your man's if it's up, then it's stuck. Come on, son. You can tell him other things. You can tell him a whole lot. There's so many other options. You, can, you don't have to tell him if it's up, then it's stuck. No, I'm not telling anybody that. Okay. No, not at all. Because pause. <laughs> right? That's not, first of all, we're just walking around saying that. But no, yeah. I, I like the way she's sounding. So Cardi, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but to your question and the entire thing of, of the state of hip hop and what we're getting right now, um, I know you're probably enjoying it, especially because you're, you. I feel like you have the time to listen to music because you're working out, you're, you know what I mean? So you have the time to kind of just catch a vibe. And yeah, um, that's where I hear a lot of this stuff now. You hear a lot, like, right? It, like in the gym, on the big speakers, um, you know, a bunch of people around, like seeing the effect that it has on the people in the in, in the workout classes or people that I'm training. Um, so that's where, like, that's the setting that I'm hearing it a lot in. And of course, like in the car, because I'm in the car a lot um, during the day. Right, commute, commute, New York City stuff. Indeed. Yep. Um, and then of course, like J. Cole just dropped the off season. Hey, man. <sighs> Boy. Boy, boy, do I he put my son on it? Boy, okay, and he put baby on it. Boy, so I was extremely happy. Um, uh, I love it actually. You know, the thought I had today as I looked at our topics and I saw the hip hop topic, and I was like, We're gonna talk about J. Cole, and I'm a J. Cole fan. I'm not, a, I'm not, a, I'm not a J. Cole like stand waiting inside out the line of Dreamville for two days. I'm not that guy, mm -hmm. but I appreciate J. Cole's music. And I think it, the common theme that I'm seeing on the timeline now and when J. Cole was relevant, like more and more relevant, is that it's either cool to love J. Cole or is it really cool to hate him? Did turn your lovers up just a little bit. Got you. Yeah. Um, so the song Interlude, right? When that dropped, I'm not a huge fan of the song Interlude. I think it's good, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's great, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then the album dropped. Of course, I'm gonna listen to the album. And then I hear 95 South. I hear Cam Hold on it. Oh my gosh, that shit! That shit sent me through the fucking roof. Yeah, I was um, like, is then, that killer? Yeah, <laughs> yo, I listened to that at 7 a.m. in the morning. I looked at Kim. I was like, I'm sorry. And every I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm. I, I never listen to music like that in the morning. Yeah, like, I'm like, I'm sorry. So yeah, and then, and then um, you're a killer. And then he's got My Life with 21 Savage, which is fire. And then he has the um the song where he's talking about getting to a fight with Diddy. And then has Diddy talking at the end of the track. What? Okay. Let me. I, okay. I, I, didn't, I didn't catch that one. Did not catch that. See how I missed things? I heard some. I heard Diddy reference, but I, he got. What did he get into with Diddy? Tell us. Um. Well, there's, I mean, there's rumors that like it was him, Kendrick, and. And Diddy all in one space, and Diddy was talking crazy, and Cole didn't like it, and I, I don't know the details. That's what I've heard, like from from radio and 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 different okay. podcasts. Okay, okay, no, no, no. no, give us, give us, give us tea. Yeah, yeah. Tea. yeah. So that, <laughs> so so that's what I've heard, right? Um, it's the song. Is that current? Uh, what current? Is it still? Is it still saucy between them? No, nah, because he was on the track. Diddy was on oh, his okay, last, okay. on the track, like on my hand. Yeah. Um, huh. But yeah, every everything is. I have a huh. different favorite song on that album every single lyrics, day. Lyrics, huh? This it's is what goes fire. on in lyrics, huh? I said these are what happens in the lyrics. That's what happens. <laughs> That's what happens when you listen to lyrics. It's crazy, right? Crazy. <laughs> Learn now, things. I won't lie to you. I listened to the album like one way through, just to get my just to get my um. This is how I this is how I uh, digest music. I uh -huh. listen one time sonically just to hear the bops that I like because that's what draws me to it. Cause like everybody's saying the same shit, really. Only a couple people say profound things. So this is probably like a good example for Cole. But yeah. I just listen to it, you know, to wh whatever, you know, and then I go back, and then I dissect each song piece by piece. So I'm not into the Diddy part yet, but the Dame drop, little baby feature, 
Yeah, little Savage. baby feature was fire. Savage feature was always fire. They never miss. Uh, they're two. Yeah, they two. have a, They have a, They have a, They have a synergy. They have a little chemistry going. They're like they're, um. They're two for two. They're right like now. Russell Westbrook and uh, Brad. No way. That's too much points. They're not like them. Like who? Russell Westbrook and Bradley Beal. No, I mean they only got two tracks together. Yeah, so I'm saying it's too much. It's too much. Yeah. I, I got carried away. Yeah, but both are fire. Um, but I feel like as far as like the state of music after the pandemic, you know, people are are vaccinated, so there's more music coming out. Um, if there's a show, are you going to a show? You going? Let's say there's a Drake show. Not right now. Are you going to a Drake show? No, no, no. Um, not without a Drake album. That's the first thing. Okay. You would go to a Drake show without a Drake not, album. Not without a Drake album. Really? Because I I go to Drake like I go to Drake shows. Yeah. So when Drake's on tour, I try to hit at least two shows in that year. So for me, it's like I don't really like that's just that, that's just my guy. So like, but what I realized in doing that is I overdid it last time I did it. Uh-huh. And this show is the same exact thing, and I didn't really like care for it as much. I was just waiting for like the surprise guest. So right now, this current state, if it's not new, and it's the same show again, it doesn't even matter what city it is, it doesn't matter what country, it's, it's just the same entire thing. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'm good on seeing him right now. New album, new aesthetics, I need it. Okay. But not right now. Um, there's nobody I want to see live right now. Uh, really? No. No, I'm not even like. Cause think about it, right? Like I would never go see Lil Baby live. I wouldn't. Really? That wouldn't. Not, and, I don't. Think, I, I don't, love I don't him. Think I would either. I don't think I would either. Why? Um, Why? He's not a performer. But let's say there was somebody. Like, would do you think like Christopher the, the, Brown? Maybe. I guess like the the threat of the pandemic would stop you from going to a show, or would you still go? Right now, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not for large crowds right now. I'm, I'm okay. still chilling. I'm still chilling. Um, and there's and 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 because I've had life without. There's nothing pressing. NBA game, playoff I game, I might tap into. I think that's a real like factor for what people do, right? It's like we've gone f- we've gone without it year and a half for without. over a year. What do you need? And you realize you probably don't need it as much as you did. Like, so is it really that pressing for you to get right back to that routine? You yeah. know, yeah. not just with shows, but just with anything, really, right? Like movies, going to the movies. Um, being in large clubs, going to you know bars with crowded bars and stuff like that. Like if you've if you've been one of those people that have been in a state that shut all that shit down and you've been without it for a year and a half, like how, like I think there's two different like ends of the spectrum, right? Like you realize, hey, I might not need it, and then there's people that are just like fiending to get back to it. Yeah, there's, there's people fiending, and I get it, man. Everybody kind of handled the pandemic different. Yeah. Um, but as for me in this household, we're not rushing to the concerts. Um, but next year, when there's a, a a full circulation of albums and and they spun, like that's for me, like that's music. Though, like I will say this: last Friday felt good. Friday pass felt amazing. We haven't had a Friday like that in a minute. No, right? Yeah. Like like that was a that's that's a music. Fr- I, I hate Yancey. I'm like, yo, this is a this is a good music Friday, and it actually kind of leads to our next topic. Is that like normally the podcast would kind of like the Joe Budden podcast would kind of like savor out a good music Friday. To yeah. dissect all those songs. And I missed that for that moment. But neither here or there. Friday was good because music is coming back, like you're saying. And I think the way it normally goes is you hear the music, you fall in love with the music, and then they go on tour. Mm-hmm. And then and then we rock. Like Rolling Louds in Miami in a couple of weeks, I think, or whatever, in a month, a couple months. Yeah. I'm not going. No. My backyard. No I was way. um actually worked at Rolling Loud last two years ago. Um, hey. and you was rolling loud? I was not rolling loud. No, I didn't. I didn't roll anything but the tires on my car. Um, it was it was fun. The thing is, like for me, I mean, you know me. It was just a bunch of young people. Like it, I, I, I just, I just don't. Everybody's nineteen. Everybody's eighteen. Everybody's teen, teen. I'm thirty five. Yeah, yeah big, and I got a bad big knee. KD. Big talk about it. So all that walking around, all that, all that shit. I don't know. But even like with the added pressure of the pandemic and probably some of those people not taking their health as serious as they should because they never did, um, that would also be a, a factor in, in me kind of staying away from that type of element for for the foreseeable future. So, yeah, I feel I you. I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. I can definitely respect it. I'm just moving locations for um, for light purposes. This okay. I'm still good. We're still good to pop. Okay. Mobile. Very good. <laughs> yeah, this is crazy. My dog He's walking ate my, around. My stress ball. He's walking around right now just to keep the keep the circulation flowing, keep the 
keep the energy up, <laughs> keep the vibes yeah. up. And I got to the couch. I wish I could show you this massacre scene as my dog teared apart my medicine, my my stress ball. Um, oh, your dog was stressed. <laughs> yes, she was. That was that was that was that was the key there. Um, so next up, uh, you know, hot girl summer was a thing before the pandemic. Uh, it's pretty girl summer now. Is it pretty girl or hot girl summer? It's is it? Girl. Is it right now? It's pretty girl summer according to Sweet Sweet Tea. Oh, Sweetie has uh, has established what it is. Yeah. Okay. For the, if you're looking for the current forecast of what kind of summer is going to be, it's pretty girl summer now. Okay. Thank you, Sweetie. Thank you, Sweetie. Thank you. Um, is hot girl summer still a thing? Like, are or are people just like comfortable being, I guess, hunkered down in their relationships with their significant other, and not out here causing trouble and drama? Because when I think of hot girl summer, uh, I think of trouble and drama. That's just me. Maybe that's sexist. So much trouble. I don't know, man. I feel like it's weird, right? Because our summers, <laughs> bear with me for a second. Our summers go with our timeline, right? So, like, if our timeline is having a hot girl summer, we'll know about it. And if our timeline is cuffed, we'll know about it. Like, it's mm-hmm. just depending on the timeline. So, right now, like, a couple, like, and as we grow, our timeline grows. So, honestly, what I'm seeing is, a lot less hot girl summers and a lot more like, oh my God, wholesome, cuffed up shorty summers. Who are you? You're expecting in a couple of months? <laughs> you, <laughs> what? You feel me? So I think the tides are changing. Um, but this summer is going to be the summer for like, it's going to be a big. Remember when you, everybody was yellowing? Ugh. This is going to be a yellow summer. Oh my I, God. I've been, I've been pandemic up. I want to go crazy. The thing is, I don't think it's going to be that crazy. The summer? Yeah. I think people are, well, I'm, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being hopeful. Like, I hope people are, like, kind of taking, I think people are kind of, like, taking stock of what 2020 was, right? And, you know, understanding, hey, like, this is what's important. This is what's not important. But no, you're right. People just want to, like, smoke hookah and uh, drink Hennessy straight. So, the fuck was that? The fuck Have you ever thinking? smoked hookah? I've tried it a few times. It did not go well. What was what was your reactions? What 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 what's hookah, what's hookah to you? I got a headache. Hookah's a waste of time to me. It's not Hookah's cool to blow the O's like fab. It's not cool to blow anything. Exactly. Not right. that that's not okay. If you do what you do, do what you do. But right. um, no, nah, hookah's not a thing for me. I feel that I, it's not really the biggest thing for me. Um, it, it, it gives me a headache. Lightheaded, and it's just not. It's not the best. It's not the best. And what's in it? Tobacco. And what else? Nobody knows. We fucking motor oil in that shit. Tobacco and some uh, some pink juice. Tobacco and uh, the shit you scrape off of the bottom of a pan after you're done cooking. That's Ooh. it. Some Ooh. little coal, some charcoal. That's what I tweeted. I tweeted the other day. Like, put the hookah, put the vaccine, <laughs> the vaccine in the hookah. In the hookah. That's nobody why I asked if you ever smoke hookah. <laughs> yeah, nobody cares what's in hookah. Put the vaccine in the hookah. Nobody's gonna ask no questions. It's hookah. It's hookah. It's just the hookah. Indeed. Um, all right. So next up, uh, you know, we touched on it a little bit before. We're both, you know, listeners. This will be the only time we really address it because, like, I don't like talking about other people's shows, no matter who it is. Uh, uh, but this is but this is pressing because you know we listen and, and we know a lot of our listeners listen and. You know, the overall themes and subjects kind of uh, relate to more situations than just this one that we're going to mention. Um, so the Joe Budden podcast, of course, very popular um, between the both of us. Number not one. Not popular with our ladies. Um, no not at all. Not even close, right? No uh, it's, it's, you know what? I think, <laughs> like, listening to Joe Budden... <laughs> Is like watching porn. <laughs> Got to do that shit when you're alone. <laughs> that is the perfect way to put you that. You can't do that in public. You can't. You feel me? Like you can't. Yeah. You're not here to be like I like like if you go and say in the streets right now like yo I, I like Joe but I think I, I love his I love his show. People judge you. People judge you and people look for an Hard. explanation from you. Think of what? And honestly, I, and, and and we'll get into it. Like given the news that like we shared today together yeah. about like what yeah. we saw, like that kind of. That kind of that kind of shakes me a little bit. It kind of shakes me a little bit on the on the ledge. You know me, man. 
um, unfortunately, uh, I am on the side of, I like all the facts, and I did this with the Tory and Meg, and guess what? We never even got all the facts. Did Tory shoot Meg? Yes. Trevor, we don't know that for a fact. Where's I the do. case? We don't know. You don't know that. You don't I know do. that. You don't know that. He shot her. You don't know that. I do. You don't know that. Okay. I might agree with you, but the, it doesn't change that we don't know that. I think we, we don't, don't have all the facts. We don't have all the facts. She said, I got shot in the foot by this man. What and other he said, facts I, he do said we I never, And he said, I never shot her. And she was shot. She showed the x-rays. She was shot. Somebody, somebody shot somebody, her. She right. shot herself. Right. All, all valid. But you just said somebody before you said it was Tori. And I'm saying we just don't know. She said it was Tori, right? so I believe it was Tori. If somebody, if, if, if you come to me and tell me right now, if you come to me and tell me right now that you out in this club and this nigga named Lamar shot you in the foot and then Lamar is just like, nah, I didn't shoot him. I'm not going to believe Lamar. Well, you're I don't not. You. But, if there's multi- but if there's mixed stories, right, of witnesses, some say he did, some say he didn't, you would be a little like, ah, I need, I don't know. I don't know. This mixed it could have been Lamar. Everything. There is. And that's what I'm saying. So it goes to the whole point with this Joe Budden thing. is like, I need all the facts before I can sit here and write off my mans. Is it disturbing? It is. Can these things be blurred all the time? Cool. So I like to wait. So so with the podcast, um, their podcast, not ours. Not ours. Because, you know, we actually talk. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, this is not the first time we've spoken in the past few months, in case you guys were wondering. Yeah. I, I know what Trevor's doing. I, I know what Trevor, I know when, I know how much Trevor's lifting tomorrow. <laughs> gosh. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Copy that. That's knowing your Joe, man. I don't. I don't think Joe knows how much little Lori's lifting. I don't think. I don't think Joe is aware of Lori's uh, workout program for tomorrow. Um, but yeah, so they broke up. Um, you know, there's a huge blow up episode where Joe Budden fires Maul and Rory from the podcast after they don't show up for the uh, the most recent episode. Um, you know, and and then Maul and Rory took about seven, six or seven weeks off. Uh, you know, with contract and respect disputes uh, between them and uh, and Joe and Joe and Joe's network. And it just it it's just all been a really big he said messy, he said messy, messy, messy situation, uh, with each person telling their sides. Maul and Maul and Rory sat down and told their side um, in a two dollar video um, a few days ago. And low key, if it's about the fans, right? If it's about the fans, it's not about the money, right? But the thing that's confusing to me. So we'll, let's let's break this down, like. I guess like it, you know I guess. like 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 through the timeline, right? So um Joe invites his other two friends, Ice and Ish, to be on the podcast. Um, the time after he tells Rory he has to take a few days off. And then that turns into like a few weeks. Now that ultimately leads to him firing them on, on the air after two episodes of them kind of like seeming like they were reconciled and seeming like things could go forward um amicably amicably. I told you this yesterday, like I'm of the stance of if you're Joe and you're running a corporation, and you're running a network, there's certain standards that you need to adhere by, right? Like you need to have meetings. Um, you need to establish a difference between personal relationships and professional relationships. Um, you need to lead by example. You need to hire people to put people in the positions to talk about money and business, especially if you take those things too personally. And you're going to say yeah. wild shit to people that yeah. ask you questions about money and business. You need to hire somebody who's not going to respond that way, who's not as invested. And then all the sides That's of right there, hire Rory. somebody neutrally, neutrally, because as yeah. you mentioned yesterday, having having Joe's manager be that guy for contact on finances might not be who you want to explain things to you in a neutral position. So you need somebody neutral for business. Exactly, exactly. Um, and then from the position of Raw and Maul, I keep saying Raw, from Maul and Whoever Rory. <laughs> um, you you can't not show up to work, right? And you can't not selectively be interested in what's going on with the company because that's right? what it seems like. It seems like they were okay with the personal relationship. Joe was okay with the personal relationship. They wanted to make it more professional. Joe kind of shoes that off because it's not been that way for years. And then when they approach Joe and Joe says, nah, it's not in your business, they shoo it off also because they're friends and they don't want to ruffle feathers. And then all this stuff builds up and festers to the point where Joe was on a show calling Rory, you know, um, measly and calling him a bitch. 
Um, it's telling him that when he used to live with Maul, Maul used to hide the laundry detergent from him. All kinds of like wild, wild shit. Like what if what have you taken away, I guess, from some of the events that have transpired? It's messy. It's a breakup, it's emotions. Um it's funny, right? Because they came on this uh on the pod the day after and they came and they were giving us the whole it's so important, you know, for men to talk about their feelings and right. And those are all valid. But what we're seeing here is this a terrible display of what happens when men don't properly articulate their feelings with each other. Mm -hmm. And it's, or let's just stop right there. This is what happens when people don't express their feelings with each other. Things get blurred. Things get messy. Things get ugly. And when you do a podcast where people, millions of people are invested now into your lives two days a week. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? When it gets ugly, we are seeing the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so, unfortunately, this is part of the ride, right, as fans. Um, and it's just unfortunate to see because I think the common theme of why we even drew to this podcast was it was like, yo, this is cool. Mm -hmm. Three homies chopping it up. Great chem. And so to see what happens between three homies, and maybe they weren't as good as homies as it could be. And I have my theories on that, right? Mm -hmm. I have my theories on that. This is what you guys promoted and this is what you guys advertised. So now when things get ugly, now you can be like, yo, this is the same dude who's hiring the laundry detergent. This is the same dude that has issue. Like, I wouldn't do that to Trev. If I thought Trev was a joke, while I'm potting with Trev, right? Like, if I didn't say that in front of his face or I didn't say that to people, like, it, it, like and that wasn't something I said out loud for Trev to hear, mm -hmm. then me going back and saying that weeks, months later, just because right after something bad happened it don't look good yeah because i was working with trev for five years so was he a joke for all five years or is he a joke now nah, because things aren't working the way we wanted to so it's just unfortunate to see for me it's just real messy um yep and i know did you see did you see maul's post today or yesterday uh what what was it i didn't see it alluding to a jo a, a Raul and maury a, whoever they are <laughs> <laughs> a rory and maul kind of thing oh, the, oh that kind of that logo that he that he posted alluding i don't I'm want not interested that. in that right i don't want it i don't think it's going to be good because i don't think their sit down together was good i think it was informative there was constant times that they, tell us that they don't even talk outside this pod yeah more don't even like first of all like more we know you don't look at this niggas text message this so now you now you texting your man i think that's weird to me that's weird behavior it's weird on all fronts and it's, and the, all this is weird and and the response that Maul and Rory did, Maul kept talking about how it's not about money, but then also kept talking about money and talking about the contracts and, you know, uh, them being privy to the, the 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 financials and everything. And to me, it's like, which way is it? Like, are you the are you the cool are you the too cool nigga that just like he was like always too cool in and 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 isn't really like pressed about anything, or are you the guy that's worried about everything? Right, and and if that's the perception that we get okay. from him, you talk, are, listening okay. to him to talk six hours a week, like what other perception is anybody else that works with him getting from him? Right, is that it's he's the too cool guy? It's not about money; it's about respect. But then, you know, you say it's about respect, but then you talk about money. Um, I, I and and with all that being said, like with the parts that all of them played, like Joe is the boss, Joe is the CEO, Joe is the go-to guy, so. He needs to be able to run an organization a lot tighter than he has. Um, and if he's not emotionally capable of doing that, which we can probably tell that he isn't, which is not a dig because most people aren't. Everybody needs help. Everybody needs support running a business. Um, then he needs to get some people who are emotionally intelligent enough to run certain aspects of his business and have communication with his talent that he's not capable of having. Because if that was in place from day one, then we wouldn't be here right now. But honestly, I don't even, I, don't, I think if all that professional, you know, um, shit was in place from day one, I don't even think they'd want to like work the way that they've worked, right? Like, cause right. they want to be able to, they they want to be able to like, feed, like talk to Joe about all these things and he's not capable. No, he's not the one. He's not the one. And if it was somebody else, they would say, oh, you, 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 you don't want to talk to me now. You can Hollywood, you get in this, you get in that. They would take that even that point personally. So at that point, you can't win. How can you win? There's no winning, man. There's no winning. Um, and 
and as you were saying that, I was thinking, I was like, yo, listen, because it's, it's, it's as simple as this, right? If I call Trev one day and I said, yo, actually, no, other way around, if you call me one day, because this is just, like, I think about things like how, me as a person. If you call me one day, like the way you did and said, yo, I want you to come through and pause some more. And mm-hmm. we do that and we rock for five years. And I, you know, I made my time commitment, but in this time commitment, without even ever really having any expectations of where this can go, right? Yep. I was just potting with my mans. It goes to a place where now I'm good. My old nine to five, I don't even need it. Right? Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, so now my life is changing. The lifestyle I'm changing. I don't even work nine to five. I don't even work Monday through Friday anymore. I work two days yeah. a week. So my life is changing. Like you've, you've made things a lot easier for me. I travel. I do this. I'm also now dropping an album. I yeah. didn't have that. I didn't have that before. But through life and through experiences, I'm, I'm now exposed and, and tapped into different. I'm challenged. I'm being pushed. This is great. So now we get it back. Dope. Second contract. We get it. We're, we're going to get a bag. My thing is like, I would ever be grateful. Right. Mm-hmm. And the only thing that I do feel here that needs to be discussed is respect. Me personally, if I'm on record telling you and telling the fans that I don't really care about potting that much and I yeah. just like doing it with my guys and this is, I'm just here because you know we rock in if, if i went through that then then the only approach is gratitude i say all that to say is like i don't understand how we got here because it never was about the bag it was about potting it was about and it was, so it was, it was about, about respect let it be about respect it was about pride you feel disrespected cool of course it's about fucking pride. It was about pride of course because um course. i was i watched like the last few bits of that uh that maul and worry talk today and and maul says in quotes, like this is what exactly he was saying. He was like, I don't, he was in referring to Joe, he was like, I don't work for you. Joe said, And it's that. like, yes, you do. Yeah. yeah. You, you do. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's okay. But come on, man. It's more we're talking about. It's like, I don't work for you. And it's like, he takes that so personally, right? Like, I don't work for you. But then people, are, like, it, it's in, in 2021, right? We need to get out of this, this mentality that everybody, either needs to own three properties and have an LLC and not work for everybody or else you ain't shit. Like all that stuff is amazing. It really is. But there's no shame in having a lucrative career working with or for or in front of or behind or on top of like another person. Nigga, you're a co-host. You you got your own drop. It's not like you say, it's not even like a save on. Not even like it's Alex. I don't even know what these niggas look like. Like you're part of this. You're part of the brand. And you've got opportunities to do more, but you just choose not to. And you're and you're a lazy fuck because you're bro. bro don't let me don't let me break like you know what I mean. Don't let me break into niggas like Mo. You don't work, cuz. And I get it. Your situation's different. You're blessed, right? But you walk around with this serious like entitlement and arrogance because of your blessing. Because you're in a position that you like your brother's bigs. And so, like, life is good. Like, you walk around like, I'm good with that attitude of I'm good. So, like, the way you handle business is very prideful because you're good and yeah, you don't hard, need it. It's, 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 it's hard, hard to, to, deal with to, to take that um, to take that pride out of, I guess, like, how he deals with certain situations. And, like, we're not all putting this on him. It's not on Maul, but this is a all. quick little character blurb I had to get off because. But I, but I think, I don't know, have, you know, heavy is the head that wears the crown, right? And heavy. And Joe wanted to be everything he could be as a friend to them while still being a boss. And that that's probably not possible. Like both of us have been in the positions of like being leaders and having to hold people accountable and delegate in certain things. Like, like I'm the type of guy that I, I love to have like a very bold line in between, you know, people that I if I'm a supervisor, if I'm a boss, people that I people that are my peers and then people that work for me, which is not the worst thing in the world to do, right? So, like, I know that some people, sometimes they go out for drinks with the people that work for them or work under them. I can't do that. That's not anything that I've ever thought was the thing to do, was to talk business with somebody that works for me over drinks or over food. You know? And, that, and that's like and that's like a routine thing that they did. Feel that, and, that's I feel routine, that. and that's a routine that other people, other people do also, right? Like, if I, like, for example, like, even like me with training right now, 
Like I'm no, I'm not going out to drinks with my, I'm not going out for drinks with my clients. Right. I'm not going out to to eat like with my clients. Like right. if we have a little little breakfast thing, like during the session or before the session or after the session, yeah, cool. We can chop it up. I'm cool with everybody that I train with. Like we like we talk, everything is laugh, it's funny, it's great, it's a great relationship, right? But, but a line. There's a line because you're paying me for a service. Right. So right. It gets blurry, man. It gets blurry. It gets blurry. And like you said, I think that was like probably the best thing. Like it's like, yo, just have somebody neutral, man. Have somebody neutral. Have somebody that's gonna reestablish those, those lines and those boundaries, because boundaries are important in business, just like just like they are in life. Um, and you and you go from there, right? And 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 Maul was upset that he brought on Ice and Ish to to continue the show, and it's like you chose not to show up to work. Whatever happens after that Bro, is, shut up. is is not <laughs> on you. When you don't other show people up. need to get paid, other people need to work. Just because you're in your bag, you and your homeboy in their bag, and you might rightfully so, rightfully so, Bro. you might feel that way. You might be justified in feeling the way you feel. Right but the now, the world does not stop spinning. It does not. That's the thing. It doesn't stop. If you and I were at Target right now, and the line of cashiers called out for the morning shift, we would have to spend the next hour and a half, like one refilling that spot. And then looking and then calling people to come in because the business still goes. The business still goes, right? Like it, it, it like nothing stops. Now I'm not gonna pod today because my boys don't want to pod and me and my boys are upset. Nah, I I get Joe, right? And like you said, heavy is the crown. So I don't I've been conflicted throughout this entire because there's there's moments where I'm like team Joe. And there's moments where I'm like, oh my God, how can you be like that to his friends? But there's moments where I'm like, yo, fuck these niggas. You feel me? Like it, it just goes back and forth. And unfortunately, we're being dragged. We're like the children of, of, of splits. I know. So, so the thing, like my overall thing is Joe needed to be a better leader because if that's the person you're going to claim to be, like I'm, I'm about ownership. I'm about to put my man's on. Right, 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 right. I'm right, about right. this. I'm about that. He didn't lead and, well. And then, Bad, no. poor. And then Thumbs this down. is how this turns out. That's on you. That's on you. And you have to own that. But mm -hmm. Joe's arrogance is going to be, it's, it's, I mean, this, it's, I can't say it's going to be his downfall because even in all things, his arrogance still prevails, right? But his arrogance is the issue here. Right, because a lot of this probably could have been resolved, but pride got in the way. And talking to a nigga like Joe, like a nigga like Joe, I don't even understand how they're friends. Right, because somebody has to, somebody has to eat the shit. Right. If you're friends with him, you do have to eat shit a lot. Someone, yes. someone though, someone does. In like with between those two, and it's like, well, like yeah, it's not going to be Joe. No, it's not. It never will be. It never will be. Um, never the last thing be. I want to I want to get to on this on this topic. Um, it came out today. Um, Olivia Dope, who was a member of the See The Thing Is podcast, which is on the Joe Budden Network, um, she went on Instagram and she announced the reason that she left the podcast was because she felt um, like Joe Budden was sexually harassing her during um, an episode that he <laughs> guest starred on uh, with her and her co-host. Uh, he felt like some of his comments were out of line. Uh, she felt like she had to kind of like laugh along with it and kind of go along with it by fear of like getting fired or being ostracized. Um, I think it's nasty. Nasty. Um, it it, it kind of it kind of shakes, I guess, like how I listen now, or if I will listen after this, you know, un, you know, until there's more clarity. Um, clarity. And and I and I say that with an understanding that, you know, like women, I've been put in so many different positions, especially in media, especially black women, and. So many nasty things have happened in hip hop, whether it comes to like rappers or male hosts or anything like that. And women feel like they have to be a certain way or laugh off certain things just to be put on in hip hop, right? Like just to have the chance because they know it's so rare that they get that opportunity. So with her saying that, it kind of makes me think like, yeah, Joe is Joe and Joe likes to joke around with these things. But again, it's like it's, it's being the CEO it's being the big boss. Different. Yeah, you want to start a network, my man. You're right. I like that. You're right. You want to be, Heavy you want to be the friends crown. with everybody. You want to be in other people's show. I didn't I didn't even like that. I didn't like the fact that the CEO is sitting in on somebody else's show. And you're and he's probably doing that to get views and, and, and get oh, draw more attention. Things. So maybe uh, that's to, okay. To maybe show. that's okay. They had Rory there. They had Maul. So it's a network. I'm okay. No, it's Let's different. Rory and Maury are employees. So that's mm. fine. But see, here's the thing, man. It's tough. Like you said, we have to, like, it's tough because it's his network, it's his thing. It doesn't give him the right to be, but like, it's built off. This, this is not like a, it's not like a potting is different. We're equals when we pod. When we no. pod. When, when, 
when when we when we pod let's go i know because we're not equals but like i'm saying when we pod we're equals when we sit down on the mic we're we're, we're talent the talent are in, speaking in in in, in off business mic. in and business that's 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 my that's how it might seem like on a call sheet or that's how it might seem on like in pre-production but that's not how it is no it's definitely not how it is i agree with that but it's but remember this is this is a whole new space potting is a new space if Joe Potty's Rogan a had a Joe Rogan network, he would talk to his, he would, I'm, I, I'm, I am almost sure. So I, I don't want to hold Joe for being, I don't think that's too nasty. These are his friends. They pod, potting is potting, whatever. I do think that as a CEO, it's a different hat you wear when you sit down on your networks. But even, but even to that point of, of them being friends, like they're not friends. Her and him are not friends. They're not friends. Right, right, right. Right, right. So right. if if so so if that's if that's how you talk to your friends, fine. If your friends have an understanding of this is how you're going to communicate, this is how you're going to joke, right? Because you have certain friends, you have close friends. You like me and you might sit down and talk about um, and talk about retail shit in a room full of people that ain't never worked retail, and we might laugh our asses off. That's funny to us. We might talk about some shit like, yeah, we worked like a 14 hour day, 13 hour day, didn't go home, went home for three hours and came right back, and we laugh about it. Some people might look at us and be like, y'all niggas was slaves. Yeah, right, right, that way. And they don't think it's funny. But we think it's the funniest shit in the world because we went yeah. through it and we, we made it work. It. Yeah. And we found the best in it at the time, right? So it's different because like we're cool and we can have that conversation. But if if he's having that conversation, let's say he's sitting next to somebody he's having that conversation with and this third party, because third party sexual harassment is a thing, right? If like me and you were in a room and, t- and we're talking about like, like sexual shit and there's a girl sitting across from us that doesn't know us from a can of paint, she's never offended. Wrong. There's nothing more uncomfortable. Let me just stop right here and tell you that moment when you're when you're when your guy friend that can't read the room and starts having like talking about women when there's like women that you know like you know like this mm-hmm. is like good conversation. That there's nothing more uncomfortable than that. So no. yeah, third part third party sexual harassment is a real thing. It's a real and it thing. happens almost every fucking day. You feel me? Every so, day. So, so that's why for me, like it does it doesn't matter if he's on a show, on a mic, or wherever, like you're the boss, you're the CEO. And it's different from you having that conversation or making that joke than another employee making that conversation or making that joke. Because if the boss is making that joke, you got to laugh. You got to go along with it. You got to just be like, this is just conversation and this is funny shit. And, and as a woman, you position, have to laugh. You, ha- you have to, right? Because un- because if you don't, then he's just going to continue. And you know, Joe, he's going to continue to just like push and push and push. Yeah. Nothing's going to stop that as long as that camera and that microphone are on. Yeah. Nothing's going to stop that except for you laughing along with it and just moving on to the next topic. So in feeling that way, like I feel her, which which is why I feel a certain way. I feel like I don't, I don't know if I'm going to listen on Wednesday. I haven't. I won't lie to you. I haven't listened to a full episode in about eight weeks. A full episode. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to listen on Saturday. Like I like I like I don't know. It's, it's it's just it's one thing if you and a bunch of niggas are going through some shit, but now like you bring a bro, you bring a woman into it that works for you. Uh, no, I, 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 I that's them? something I, I can't really get down. Joe with. should have never hired women, respectfully. And he shouldn't because, hire anybody. He should have somebody that hires people. No, Joe, <laughs> Joe should not be associated. Yeah, fact, Joe should not be associated with the women because you don't have a clean record, and they but, will, and they'll smear your name. So for your safety, even if, let's say, let's say Joe's a saint in this, and he didn't even walk. Joe has a history that a statement like this is is ninety five percent believable. We hear the statement and we and we already know in what type of context it might have already been done because no, we I have a history it of it. I believe it happened. And I, and, I, and it's not even based on the history. I we believe it happened. Right. I, it happened. I, I think it happened and I, and I think it's just because of, of less of history but more of character. And I'm just like, dude, like you as that person, as that guy with that stigma should not be him. You should not put yourself in those positions. I get what no. you're trying to do, but either have somebody do it for you and stay clear so that no one, because the thing is if all of those women turn around and be like, yo, Right now, that whole entire pod is like, honestly, Joe made me feel uncomfortable too. You're fucked. No, but the thing is, they. So I think that's important to understand, like about her coming out and saying this stuff, is that those other women may have not felt uncomfortable, but if she did, there's an issue. Of course, of course. If one out of three feels uncomfortable, there's an issue, right? Like all of three of them don't have to feel uncomfortable, and maybe, and maybe the the other two felt uncomfortable, but not but, to the extent. They they can compartmentalize and they can brush it off and then go to work the next day. Not everybody can do that. Not everybody. Not 
first, I'm not, I shouldn't even have said not everybody can do that. No one should be required to do that. Like no right. one should be put in that position. Right. So if you're the boss, if you're the CEO, if you're this nigga that talks about ownership and owning things and running things and doing that successfully, you just, you just, you just got to not be that way. Or you just have to take a step back and yeah. run th- and, and do your show and do your numbers, m- be the final say in certain business decisions, but have somebody else disseminating the information that you need spread across your channels. 100%. 100%. Indeed. All right. So next up, we took a lot of time with that. So next up, um, we're going to uh, say, man, we're going to say this. Weeks, it's been eight weeks of that. It's been eight weeks. Um, so we're going to save the stakes topic for the next episode. We're going to talk about how high stakes life is, and that's going to be a okay, super yeah, long yeah, conversation. For sure. That's going to be at least, we're going to be talking that for at least like 30 minutes. Don't pot on that. High stakes. Um, yeah, that works. That works for me. Um, next thing, of course, we got to get to basketball. NBA Real quick, we can keep it. I was thinking we could keep it right here with it. We just it's keep playoff it, time. Right, playoff time, and we can keep it right here on playing games. Playing right games? I right, will. Right, keep it right here on playing games because we honest, and and then and then we can go through um next round because we we can't really officially t- know who's going to play who but who do you think is going to win the championship we'll, we'll call it early uh huh so talk to me about the playing games today we got Indiana versus Charlotte Hornets give me your winner uh Hornets really yeah okay um Hornets with ease I think it'll be a close game. Um, I, I haven't watched a lot of Pacer basketball. I don't think anybody really has. <laughs> they have, they have, I mean, you know, sports betting. They have guys who can do it. They have guys who can get it done. They have Karis Levert. They, they have Demontis Sabonis. They got Miles Turner. They got a good team. They and, got a, who, and, 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 TJ, TJ McDonald. Don't sleep on White Boy. TJ Warren. No, White Boy, White Boy. Oh, my, oh McConnell. McConnell. Oh, McConnell. Yeah, yeah. They, have, they have two TJs. Yeah, um, TJ. McConnell's really great off the bench. Uh, you know, the reason why I say Hornets is because, like, Gordon Hayward's been playing great. Lamelo Ball is back and healthy. Yeah. Um. I just is, I think did that solidify him as the rookie of the year? No. Is Anthony he the rookie Edwards of the year? The rookie, Anthony Edwards is the rookie of the Look year. Look me in the eye and tell me he's the rookie of the year. Look me in the eye. Anthony Edwards. <laughs> it's so tough, man. I can't call it. Who's your MVP? Joel Embiid. That's disappointing. Um, Why? Who's your MVP? Chris Paul. This is my MVP. Really? Two. Hundred percent. There's not even a debate for me. There's not even a. There's not even a debate. Everybody else, sure, good candidates. MVP, Chris Paul. My MVP is Joel if Embiid. Not, Chris, if not Steph Curry, that's it's, it. It's, it's, it's Joel Embiid simply for the fact that it's just great to watch somebody as a big man be unguardable no, it's great. again. I love him. Yes. Yeah. He's, he's unguardable. He's, he's, right he's now, he's a problem. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. But talk to me about the Chris Paul effect. Is that not? Is that does not? Well, Chris Paul's not, not even the best player on his team. Exactly, but so but that, that that right? Check that. See, then that's the thing, right? We're talking about players, not best player. It's not it's not the best player or the or the most valuable best player on the team. It's the most valuable player. And to me, I'm looking at a team that last year at this time would have been in a bubble playing game, or they were in the bubble trying to play in, right? And now it's, they're you know one piece. Now they're a number one. Number or they were or number one or number two seed. They were they were they were a, a breath away from number one seed. A breath away, okay. A big breath. It wasn't a big breath. It was it, it was it was, <laughs> it was not a big breath at all. It was one game. It was one game. They it was one, one game. game. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> a breath away from first place. So you go from not even competing, right? And all we did was got rid of one, add a couple of no names, and Chris Paul. You're telling me that he's not the most valuable player. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm telling you. Because cool. the Suns would have made the playoffs this year without Chris Paul. Would they have been a number one or number two seed? I don't think they would have been number two. But would they, I would they be I, in the playing game? Tell them they would be in the playing game right now. No, they'd yes, be at least yes, a top be. six seed. No, they'd yes, be a top six be. seed. Because yes, they were undefeated they in the bubble last year. Ooh. Tyler Hero averaging 25 points. Okay. What did he do this year? That does not matter. That does not matter. Okay. They were not, they were not even, you were never thinking, oh yeah, next year after this playoffs. The Suns will be in the top four. You never even said that, and, you're, and you never even said that. I didn't. I mean, never I, I don't. I don't normally think about the Suns because you were right, right. <laughs> so my thing is, this most valuable player came onto the Suns and made them relevant. And to me, that's an argument, and, and that's the argument itself. Listen, it took everything in my power to not respond with Julius Randle as my MVP. So, 
you know. Listen, man, I, I appreciate you holding your restraint, but I do like that. And so Anthony <laughs> Edwards is your is your is your rookie of the year. Yeah, if we go back on tape, I I'm, I predicted Anthony Edwards would be rookie of the year. Listen, I hope you're right. Me and my guys, we have a bet, right? Because mm -hmm. the odds for Lamelo was th was negative one thousand seven hundred, whatever that means. Basically, mm -hmm. ultimate favorite. Okay. Yep. And then next for Anthony Edwards was like plus three hundred and ninety, which means it's like yo, like he's nowhere even close yeah. to being thought of by the books. So I would be baffled, truly, if Anthony Edwards wins his MVP just based on sports betting. I think he will. I uh, hope so. so. The next, uh, the next Eastern Conference playing game, we got we got the Wizards and the Celtics. Give me, give me your, give me your, give me your winner. So right now you have the Wizards. Hornets. And then you're so you have Hornets and you have Wizards. Yeah, I have Wizards too. Yeah, they're on fire. <laughs> Wizards is gonna punch them. Niggas. They're on fire. <laughs> Jalen Brown is out for the year. Um, no Jalen Brown in this game. Jason Jaylen. Tatum is a beast. You needed Jalen. But the rest of that Celtics team, but besides Jason Tatum and you Kemba Walker, Jaylen. the rest of them niggas is bums. Yeah. Evan Fournier is all right. He's a bum. He's a French bum. They're all he's bums. All, he's all right. He's all right. No, you would you good. would like him on the net. Uh, <laughs> I would not. not. Not this year. Okay, I got you. I would my not. Bad. My bad. Quickly. Replacing who? R.J. Barrett. No. My bad. Quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my fault. Yo, I could not. Your bullet. Your roster bulletproof. Bro. I can't say with the Knicks. Uh, uh, what's yeah. our buddy's name? Um, Bullock. Bullock. Uh, Reggie Bullock. He's been killing. He's been averaging like seventeen the past like yeah 10 games. Except the days that I betted on him, he never. He didn't even hit a three. Not a single three. Oh, Is that a joke? Is that a joke? <laughs> yeah, Reggie Bullock five for five on threes in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I'm like, oh, it's killing. lit. No, he's been killing late. Yeah, right, so, so shout um, to the Knicks. The the Western so, so what, Washington, Washington, absolutely. So we'll get the Western okay. Conference play in. You got the Spurs and the Grizzlies. Who you got? I mean, the Spurs should win it, but the Grizzlies want it more. I I don't, I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means either. <laughs> But that's what I have for you. I don't know who's going to win it, right? Oh, I, got the Spurs. I do know that the Spurs win it, yeah, and the Grizzlies want it more. So we'll see. We'll see what what hits what tomorrow. Yeah, you guys got to excuse the alarms in the background. I live in Brooklyn now. Yeah, Brooklyn. Um, and then the Lakers and the Warriors, the marquee play-in game. Come on, the man. You knew, you knew you could have a play-in game. You knew you could have a play-in game with some some reason to draw the crowds. We didn't want to see Memphis. Steph. Yeah, LeBron and stuff. I'm excited, man. It, tomorrow is tomorrow's a fucking holiday in this highway. I'm like the homies come over. Who wins this? Uh, who wins this playing game between the Lakers and the Warriors? Ideal world, Lakers Steph win. Score? Steph is giving them niggas forty. Yeah, 40. easily, right? 40. 40. Yeah. Forty on your head top. You heard? Mm -hmm. <laughs> forty. If I feel nice today, I might give y'all niggas sixty for trying me. Um. But 40 for sure. I think the Lakers win it, though. Mm -hmm. Right? I do, too. This is so scary. I've never... Okay, okay. so this is this is the real this is real confession. I've never been a LeBron fan mm -hmm. against Steph Curry. That's real. So you always, I guess, rooted for Steph in favor of LeBron. Every single time. Yeah, every single time. I think the, I think the Lakers can win this pretty easily. Um, I don't think it's as easy as you say it is. They have a terrible third quarter form. Frank has terrible... Um, rotations for his subs he hasn't even figured out his team chemistry yet so i do not think it's easy what's as wrong with say. anthony davis it should be what's wrong with anthony davis we think that's the problem i i think it's a problem i think him not being dominant enough is a problem and we always forget that they have andre drummond also who's been cleaning the boards like a fucking madman we'll um and, and playing amazing defense who Andre Who? Drummond, Andre Drummond. Don't give him don't don't give him more credit than he needs. He's not that great. He's, he's lazy. been great for the Lakers. Um, he's been okay for the Lakers. Not great. He's, he's been not been good. great. He's not been. He's not. He's been inconsistent. Um, his minutes are sporadic. Uh, his spacing is terrible. Um, and he and he doesn't have like like you said like it's nice to watch Joel Embiid. What does Andre Drummond? What can Andre Drummond go do for me right now? I mean, he's not rebound. a scorer, scorer. He's a right. rebounder. He's a defender. He's sometimes, a... sometimes he rebounds well, and sometimes, like I'm watching, I watch the numbers every single day. Yeah, it's you got inconsistent. Time. I have a lot of time, so <laughs> it's it's 
it's it's Andre Drummond for me. Like he's just not being consistent. It's a lack of guard play. It's KCP not. It's just inconsistent niggas on the Lakers. Yeah, and KCP so, has not been himself. Inconsistent. Yeah. Um. It's, it's just not good. It's not good. I'm not. I'm not confident going into this playoffs as a Laker fan. I'm not. So so those are the those are the playing games. Um. We got to talk about my Knicks. Uh, nobody thought they'd be where they are right now. No one, not me. Season, Salute. All these professionals said they would win 20 games. Um, nobody predicted Julius Randle would have the season he had, would be an all-star. R.J. Barrett, borderline all-star. Um, Derek, Ro- Derek Rose joins the team, takes them to a whole nother level. I think they're 23 and 11? Rose? 24 and 11. 24, 24 and 11? 24 11 since Derek Rose has joined the team. Is that your MVP? <laughs> He's mine. <laughs> Um, you know, for me, it's very satisfying because last year I was at kind of a breaking point when it came to being a Knicks fan, just given all the bullshit that happened um, over the years with the the team and the coaching and the management. And this year has been, you know, a revelation. Especially, man, it's been refreshing for y'all. And it's been, been amazing. Um, you know, we we're hosting a playoff series. The Hawks stand no fucking chance at all. I was surprised that they were in so comfortably. Who the Knicks? No, the uh, Hawks. Like they were they, like clinched. You feel me? Like they, <laughs> Lakers didn't even get a little clinch poster. Them niggas got clinched. The um the um the Hawks. Their season turned around after they fired their head coach. Turned around in a big way. That, that's what that was it for. And you know who didn't even have that great of a season? Trey Young wasn't even that great. No, he wasn't. Was okay. I was just about to say that. I was just about to say that. Um, He's a good player. He's been really great playmaking, and he—I think he's like second in the league in assists. But his shooting has been really off, terrible. And when he and when he can't shoot, and all he does is attack the basket, he's pretty good at finishing, but not that great. Um, I think John Collins has carried a lot for them. Uh, Bogdanovich has carried a lot for Uh, them. Um, Clint. Oh, there's another guy I'm forgetting. Clinton Capella. Clint Capella is is carrying a lot for them in the yeah, paint, so boards. it's been a team effort. Yeah, it's a with team Trey, effort, with Trey, being but Trey Young is not is not him. Real yeah. quick, also along the lines of not him, John Morant, not him. John Morant is different this year. I, is there, I mean, is John Morant's second year? Or is Trey Young's third year or, or second? Third Trey, year. Th- Trey Young's third Trey, year. Trey's third, and John. Ja, uh, Josh second. Hey, hey, hey. Um, little sophomore slump for John Morant. Yep. Um, but we think he can definitely work himself out of that. Uh, so yeah, Knicks. Like I, I'm excited I am, for I am, Knicks. I won't miss a Knicks playoff. I promise you, I won't miss a Knicks playoff game. Nah, I I will not. I I'll cancel shit to watch Knicks playoff yeah, games. I'm excited, man. It's gonna be for like you know, I've never been a Knicks fan, so I'm not gonna sit here and be like I'm excited for myself. I'm excited for all my homies. Uh-huh. I got a lot of homies who never waver. You know what I mean? So shout out to all the mm-hmm. Knicks fans out there because you guys really like as a sports fan, bro. Like no one wants to have a losing season. No one wants to be like, yeah. Uh, Hopefully LeBron gets it. Like it's cool. It's cool to see your team get into it, um, and it's cool for the home team to do it. Especially coming out of a pandemic, it's, it has to be a different energy right now in New York. It was. It was more than just losing though, because like other teams lose and they don't deal with the the bullshit that Knicks right. the Knicks fans and Knicks well, the players and management do. Huh? Yeah, the standards high for Knicks. Yeah, the standards high now, right? And um, like just the bullshit with Jim with James Dolan kicking, you know, Charles Oakley oh, out the garden, like that. And you didn't like that. Spike Lee getting getting disrespected like it was all either. fucked up like that compounds the losing and then hiring like these bad coaches like fizdale fizdale was not the guy for a young team he was not the guy to coach a young team he was not the guy to coach julius randall he was not that guy tips you know? an amazing ch- tip gets tip tips you get it right tip should be coach of the year tip should it'll get probably it. go to it'll probably go to the jazz coach but tip should get coach of the year on the on, on the heels of the jazz do you think the jazz i think the jazz can make the finals with the Jazz beat is Donovan Mitchell healthy? I think he's healthy. Yeah. 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 And and then who are they seeing in the four game series? Um. Well, they play the eighth seed, the eventual eighth seed in the first round. My um, thing is when it comes comes down to it, I just don't see them. They can be any. T- I don't know, man. They because, could. They could. Yes, they could. Because think think about the teams that we hold in high regard in the West: the Lakers, the Clippers. Maybe even the Blazers to a certain extent with Dame Lillard. Um, if Dame didn't fall off, I would Nuggets. say this would be the year for them to sneak into the finals. But he fell off. But the Blazers, is, oh, they're, but this is the Blazers every year. But they're, they're healthy. Yeah, this is good now. This is good. This is Dame time. Dame they're time. They're healthy, but are they going to play defense? 
that is a problem also because they don't play defense. Their bench outside of Melo, their bench is inconsistent. Yeah. Losing it's, it's Gary Chen tough. was tough. We need no, we just need niggas. Losing Gary Chen was tough. We need niggas to step up. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't understand Players the Gary Trent enough. trade. Norman Powell's all right, though. Norman Powell is good. He's a good defender. He's athletic. He's great. Um, but yeah, just think about the teams you hold in high regard. Like, I can see the Jazz beating the Clippers in a four-game yeah, series. Of Gary, that's stupid. I can see the Jazz beating a, a kind of beat up, inconsistent, hasn't played together a lot Lakers team in a seven game series. I don't see it. I'm, I can see I them just, I don't shellacking see that. the Nuggets. Yeah, take the Nuggets with you. Um, uh, the Clippers, the Clippers are not consistent enough. The Clippers are not dominant enough. Take them with you too. The playoff Rondo, something serious. Don't ever, don't ever sleep. Um, I just don't see. I don't think they can beat the Lakers. At the end of the day, if Anthony Davis wants to bust Rudy Gobert's ass. That's what exactly what he's gonna do. I mean, he and would we have know to, that he would he would actually have to want. He would have to, to want to. He'd yeah, have to want to. And he that's can, the thing, though. But he would have to want to. I'm on the I'm on the firm believing of that. Most of the times, niggas do want these things. I do believe that. I don't know why. Maybe I don't. Not, yeah, right. I know. I feel you because sometimes it, I'm like, how you don't, don't look like you do. Yeah. Yeah. No. It, but it's we we like we think about basketball, right? Like you and I think about it's a fun thing that we do or have done in life. No, I'll never do that again. Uh, by the way. <laughs> Never, again. never. <laughs> it's a fun thing that we do or have done in life. But for them, it is literally a job. Think about the job you go to five days a week. You give your best effort every day? Nah, but I don't play for stakes. Y'all niggas play for stakes. You play for pride. But no, play. But it's all, I mean, the stakes are relative. Like you go into work to earn a living to support, to provide. But on that, on that Thursday at that Thursday at 2.30, you really got all you got. All you given all your best on a two on a Thursday at two thirty p.m. working five days a week. No, you're not. I don't. But the stakes are different, Trev. And that's the thing. It's like I'm not going to hold them to uh, to the normal the way we think about nine to fives. I will. I can't right because like this like because in with your job comes stakes, comes standings, comes rankings, comes statistics. That's come real, that's the real life too though. Right. It's just not measured the same way. But it's measured more. It's it's your value is determined based on way more closely to this, and so I feel like when the stakes are this high, these guys should really. I don't know. I, I don't, again, I look at things like how I would if I was if I'm playing for the whether it's my job or not. My job is to get this championship because with uh -huh. that comes a bonus. With making the playoffs comes a bonus. With going every round comes a bonus. I'm after the bag if it, if it's the bag. So I'm gonna show yeah, up to work. I feel I'm gonna show up to work. This, they, they all get bonuses as soon as, as soon as these playing games are done, a bonus check comes. Everybody. I get it, but but the thing is like with, with, with athletes, just like with regular people, right? Like even if you don't give your best effort on that Thursday at 2.30 p.m., you know Friday at 3 a.m. that direct deposit is hitting. I feel so even you. with an NBA player, you know if you don't give your best effort in some guys, game, some guys, some 70, guys. game 70 of the regular season, you know that check is still coming at the end of the week. High stakes, man. Playoffs, man. Playoffs are different. Like I feel Competitors. like ready, whether you're a professional athlete, whether you work an office job, like it's just, it's impossible to give 100% of your effort 100% of the time. No, Logistically, mentally, physically. physically, it's impossible. But now it's playoffs time. You and don't have a okay. playoffs time in retail. But then that's, but you have fourth quarter shit. For who though? That's not, that's for, that's for the company. I don't care about that. You never cared about that. Whatever. I, I I'll mean, see I you at 6 a.m. I'll be at 6 a.m. Yeah. You feel me? Like, we're not attached to that. After, like, we know the check's going to be there. Whether I give 100% and restock in this entire AWOL or if I don't, it's going to get done. It'll be whatever. But yeah, the paycheck will still come. But now, like, if I don't give 100% against the Jazz, they will beat me and the season's over and we won't win the chip is what we set out for. Stay but I think, I think as fans, we kind of make the stakes higher for them than they really are. Right, because what happens after what happens after you what 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 happens after you lose a playoff series? You go home. You're upset you for go a few home, weeks. but you didn't want to. Yeah, okay. No, you didn't want to, but you go home. You're upset for a few weeks. I don't think your effort is. I don't think hang that, out with your I don't friends, think that's your effort. Though. I don't think that's and your life is regular. That's that's the post. That's the post effects of your effort. I think your efforts going into that is like I want to win this chip. Yeah, but even if you don't give your best effort, and you lose. Life is still regular after that. Life is still fine. It's still it's still going to be fine. I just don't think that if Anthony Davis woke up and was like, yo, today Rudy Gobert is not getting the best of me. But see, <laughs> that's the difference different. between between guys like Anthony Davis. Between That's the difference between guys like Anthony Davis and a guy like, 
LeBron or Kobe or MJ or Steph Curry or KD or Kyrie or any of these guys that have gone out there had epic playoff performances, won championships, won MVPs because they don't take that break, right? They don't. They're emotionally strong enough yeah. or stronger, and they don't. They don't take that time and and. It's not a thing where they rationalize being okay with losing. I, I really feel like with AD, he rationalizes being okay with losing. He has, and when you have lost, when you have lost so much seasons, and, and you know what I mean, like if you've never, you never played for nothing, and that's and this is a good point actually, Trent, because if you never played for nothing in your career, if this is probably maybe your second or third postseason, you don't understand what it takes to really get to it. I don't know if you have that switch to go crazy, to lock in, right? Only like, a few people do. Only a few, like you said, only a few people do. So like AD, like you said, like he spent a lot of postseasons at the crib. A lot of postseasons at the crib. Check still came. Bag still came. But I think I, his- I want to see that. I want to see that. I think his postseason legacy is still being built. Last year right. was a great postseason. This Decent. year could be another great- po- Another one. <laughs> this year could be another great postseason. Um, but sometimes when I watch him play, it, it just kind of I, I I think he forgets he's as big as he is, he's as tall as he is, and he's as good as he is because he lets people go around him. Like even that Nick game, he should have had fifty. Should have. Who was the big? Oh no! Oh, Nerlens first Noel. of all, hold on, Julius. <laughs> yeah, was kill- Julius gets to that baseline, and he he's been killing everybody Julius from is that same out spot. Right there from the little- Every <laughs> game. Every game. Yo, come here real quick to my office. I want to show you something. He takes real that quick. little step. He takes a little step, that little side step to the baseline yeah. with the lefty swish. He lefty never switch. misses that. That, that nigga never OD. misses that shot. It's OD. It's, it's child yeah. He did that twice to close the game out. I was like, this is humbling. <laughs> <laughs> this is hot. Yo, someone stop the move. <laughs> did you see Um, the, there was a game a few weeks ago. Uh, uh, They played the Jazz. The Knicks played. No, the Knicks played the, um, the Mavericks. Okay. Knicks played the Mavericks. And um, like KP would switch off to Julius like a few times with Julius on that baseline, <clears throat> and it, oh my god, it was it was fucking embarrassing. It's food on that baseline, yo. Julius is nice. It was yeah, fucking I like embarrassing. I like watching Ju play. Yeah, um, but that's our play. Another, our, does he have another one of these in him? Another season? You think? I think Julius has another season like this in him. Absolutely. Is this it, okay? Is this Julius? I think this is Julius. This is Julius when being. Uh, Cause I um I told you I listened to that podcast with him and um and Woj, um that interview that he did, and the biggest difference to him between last season and this season is he's being held accountable by his coaching by his coaching staff. He feels like last season he would go out on the court and he would do what Julius does. He would grab a rebound, he would run full speed up the court, try to yeah. make a layup, not draw a foul or get an offensive foul or get a turnover, and he, wasn't he would look at the bench and nobody would care. Nobody would care that this was happening. He would look at other players being late or 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 like turn over, turning the ball over, missing open shots, and nobody would care. And now, like you go in a in the pro season practice, or off season practice with Tibbs, and if you chew and gum the wrong way, it's a problem. That way. So that way. I mean that 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 yeah. breed, you can only get better under that. And if you want Bring that, that to back. Be you, Bring that coach and, back. And think man. about the guys that are on the Knicks right now that got burned last season that aren't this season. Like Neil Akeen and like like uh, like Kevin Frank Knox. Is a, Frank is a joke. Kevin, I could I, I could have probably Kev. To me, it looks like Kev was actually supposed to be really good this year. He started off the season really well, and I think he just probably couldn't buy into Tibbs's style of play, which is lock lock up, lock up. Yeah, they they've been playing amazing defense. So I think the coaching and the organization is really like played a huge part in it. And this, I think, this is him. You know, you know. And, I've and, never and coached grown men before, but that has to be hilarious. Think about that. It's hard. Yo, I'm sure it's really hard. If you let hard. this nigga get a bucket right now, I'm going to bench you. Trevor, you're 35 years old. If you let this nigga get a bucket right now, I'm going to bench you. But see, that's... And you have to sit there and be like, yo, I have to lock in. At 30. You have to. <laughs> you, you have that's to. great coaching, though. That's great coaching. and that's... You have to be able to say that to a 35-year-old and understand that it's the bigger picture. And that's what the Knicks did. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's it's, in, it's man. They bought into tips because we know what tips we know how tips gives it up. That's 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 not a joke. So to see what the Knicks did as in buying in, being a hard nosed, cast out, uh, New York team, stubborn, like you said, Julius doing his own thing. Niggas just doing whatever they want. Yeah. And to buy in so quickly to turn it around and be the number four seed and definitely making it to the second round. Salute. That's, Yo, that's, that's you make it to the, they can they can make it to the they can make it to the semis. I don't know about all that. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. Like if they 
if they if they play, I have to see if where they, they can beat, match up. They, they can, can beat so they can beat the Hawks in maybe like five or six games, right? Let's give them five or six games to beat the Hawks. Six. Um, yeah, five or six. Yep, I'm with you. Okay. Honestly, I think it can be a sweep, but that's yeah. No, five, I don't. Well, five or I think six, it can be a sweep, but I don't want to say. It. I'll say five New or six. Playoff I'll be team humble. making it, yeah, yeah, humble. Four um, six. and then who who do they play potentially after that? Right, they play either maybe like the Bucks or Miami. If Miami beats the Bucks, you could beat Miami. We could beat Miami in a playoff series. I don't could, know. I don't you know. know. Let, let me tell you something. Let me tell you what your secret sauce is. Let me tell you what your secret. Let me tell you right now. The Knicks' secret sauce, oh my God, it's Derrick Rose. I it watched is. that man check into the game and give the Clippers 17 straight before the half yeah. ended. Yeah. You feel me? Off the bench. The thing and, I worry and about. And dimes. And dimes. With the Heat, the Heat have great coaching. Amazing great coaching, coaching. Great coaching. Great culture. But great. Co- uh, okay. 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 All right. Okay. I'm not gonna get you in trouble. Um, okay. Great coaching, great leadership from Jimmy. Great yeah. team. I, I'm not saying that they could beat the Heat as the Heat are some chumps. I have the Heat going to going repeating to at least the Eastern Conference Finals again, right? But you could beat the Heat, is what I am saying. If you take out that secret sauce. I feel you on that. I mean, I, I'm just I'm just happy the Knicks are back in the playoffs. Um, last on, thing man, we'll get dream to. Big. Last thing we'll get to, right? Do people even really care about the Brooklyn Nets? We wrote it off. We already know. We, you know what it is. You know what it is. Potentially, feel like potentially championships. I think they win the championship. I've, I've said this. I'm on record of saying this. But yeah, they're the best team for 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 a team with the, like the guys that they have on that team and knowing that they have a really great chance to win a championship. It is quiet in this city for the Brooklyn Nets. Really it- quiet. Yeah, it's no buzz. It, nobody who's a Brooklyn fan, right? No, it, you haven't. You had like you were a Brooklyn fan. Y'all just moved to Barclays within the decade, um, and now you guys are in the playoffs and you have a great team. It's always just been easy. It's easy, whatever. As a New York Nick, you've struggled. It's different. Mm-hmm. That's why the buzz in New York is different. For Brooklyn, it's like we just got y'all. It's cool. This is this is cool, right? But in New York, it's like, fam, wow, I haven't had this shit in so long. Yeah. You feel me? That's why the buzz is there. Um, I'll tell you this. Brooklyn, don't lose, right? You feel me? That's what you don't do. Don't lose this 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 finals. You should win it. That's what you should do. With everything that you have, everything you put together, all that, you should win it. Bigger if you lose it than if you win it. It is it is it would There's be no buzz right much now, but if bigger you lose news shit, if they lost. They're burning it down. They're than burning if they won. it down. Yeah, yeah. You're 100 percent right about that, and um, don't let them lose in the first round. Yeah, Brooklyn, don't go in there and think shit's sweet. Dominate everything you need to dominate. Don't don't do anything else because Stephen A. He's ready. Everybody's just ready to let the the hounds on him so early. So Brooklyn yeah. has to just meet live his expectations. There's no like it's like being the best team. Nobody talked about the Lakers, right? Like what well, when the Lakers were back in the day, we just knew that we'll see them there. Right, so we didn't care about the whatever else. There's no buzz. We'll see them niggas there. Brooklyn, mm-hmm. we'll see you there, but don't lose it. Yeah, Come. yeah, indeed. All right, it's great to be back. It's good to be back, man. Feels good. Feels good. Giving you guys a good. Uh, looks like an hour and a half, maybe a little less. Yeah, man. Y'all ain't doing yeah. nothing anyway. Y'all ain't doing goddamn thing. Um, thank you guys <laughs> for listening. Of course, <laughs> we're gonna try. We're gonna try and get the video back. Um, if I can get my setup a little bit better, if I have more time for that. Uh, sure. We'll definitely get the video back. But in the meantime, listen to our strong, soothing voices. Um, very pleasant voices to digest. Very pleasant. So. Very pleasant. Very enjoyable. Indeed. For um, for Josh, this is Trev. Once again, guys, this is the Trevor and Josh podcast. New, new, new. Formerly known as the King Speech podcast. Now we're just going to make it really, really simple, really personal for you guys. This is the Trevor and Josh podcast hey, my featuring name is Josh. Trevor, Trevor and Josh. Huh? I said, hey, my name is Josh. That's Trevor. Yes, indeed. He is Josh. I am Trevor. Uh, together, we are <laughs> the Trevor and Josh podcast. <laughs> yeah, there. Indeed. All right, y'all. Peace out. Peace.